Chris Geiger, and welcome to No Movies in Hell. Hi, I'm LaCroix Scott, and today we are reviewing The Silent Sea. This is our first review of a non-movie. Yes. It's, I guess it's more or less like a, a television series. Yeah. So first season of a television series. Do you think there'll be a second season? I don't think so. I think it 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 kind of ended well. I agree. Although you you never know if they think they can make money, <laughs> they'll come back. They'll bring that girl back. They'll. Uh, we're gonna have spoilers. There's no way we're not. But yeah, uh, there's no yeah. way they'll bring. What's her name? Luna. Yes. Yes. We'll see her again when she's like twenty five. <laughs> like, what's her life like now? Or they'll like challenge, you know, the international, not international, but like the Korean space um, company will challenge them to, you know, something else, like have them go back in and go, oh, by the way, or there's another space station on the other side of the moon to get to, to find water. Right. I, you know, and it, I feel dumb saying this, but I don't know what is the Korean space Oh, the, the agency that, like. yeah, yeah, don't know. Do they send missions into space? Oh, in real life? I don't think in so. But in, in this yeah. universe, they did. And I was like, this is actually pretty exciting because it's not US centric. It's actually like, it's the Korean government going out and trying to solve this water crisis by going to the moon. Hey, water is where you find it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, is it? <laughs> this was really strange. I had, it's interesting, the expectations I had going into this, I thought was going to be more horror. Mm. Almost like there's a lot of alien feel of like, we got to solve this problem. You know, obviously there's resources that are depleted in, on earth. Oh, and we set up shop and we did something on the moon you need to go there and figure this out and we need water. So I think the first two episodes were kind of around, you know, just trying to secure the water. And then it became very conditional of, okay, this is how we're able to do this. And then it became, you know, you kind of didn't want to get the water because something would happen and they couldn't explain it. And then it just added a whole nother element when it was like Luna, it wasn't horror in a sense of, the water, it became a horror against your, the people that you're with to get through the mission. Right. It seemed, I mean, it did seem like maybe almost three different movies. Mm -hmm. There was, I did think it was, well, you recommended it. So yes. I hadn't really even planned on watching it, but you said, this is good. And so I was, okay. But it seemed, it started slow. Mm -hmm. I felt like it was, it was definitely sci-fi. I, but I didn't know beyond that. I thought it was going to be horror too. Like they were going to get up there. It was going to be aliens. Yeah. That's like where it usually goes once you get up there, but no aliens. But then there was something you weren't sure. Maybe it was alien. You weren't really sure that it wasn't aliens for a really long time. Right. Yeah. Even like, you know, the first time you see someone pick up one of the canisters that they're supposed to, and then it was like an entity. And I was like, oh, is this like, yeah, is it sci-fi entity? And then you find out it's a little girl. Self-sufficient. And there are a lot of um, Korean dramas that I've watched that have sort of this supernatural element to it. So I was like, well, is that a, is that a ghost? it could be so yeah I thought it was interesting and it was a concept that I hadn't seen before uh, mm -hmm. although I, I don't watch a lot of sci-fi so maybe it's out there but uh, I hadn't seen it before I thought it was pretty well done that the sets were really good I mean I think a lot of the Korean stuff that I've seen the sets are great and they're very mm -hmm. careful with them like I don't know if you remember uh, Parasite or a lot of the movies yes. that come out of uh, 
Korea, you'll see like a traffic, like they're, they're driving along and there won't be an accident, but everyone will come to a stop (laughs) (laughs) just shy of hitting each other. And they're very careful. And in the movie Parasite, they're very careful with that house. Mm -hmm. The house is never really damaged in any of the scenes. And I, I saw an interview where they said, you we were, we were very careful with the house. Like we wanted to make sure we didn't damage anything. <laughs> we wanted to make sure. So I, the, but the sets are always pretty Amazing. elaborate and pretty well done. Yeah. So. Yeah, they really captured um, a space station on the moon very well. And it's fascinating because we really didn't get a sense of, you know, in this future state of, of the world, like how, you know, things looked, it was very, you know, of the scenes there, I think there was one where folks were lining up to get water, but it was outside on just kind of like a blacktop pavement, which was like, this is a recipe for disaster, because if the water spills, it'll either evaporate or like no one's getting anything. But there was no indication of like, or at least I felt there was no indication of like living your best life or living like in real life, it could have been brutalist, it could have been packed and tiny but when you get to the space station it's very you know it's a maze it's a puzzle of trying to figure out what's going on there's lots of glass which i was you know and procedures and you know multi-step things i think the the attention to detail was very very well definitely um so in the silent sea we've seen some of those people before in other shows especially other netflix shows so the woman who plays the doctor uh the lead doctor is was the lead character in stranger which is a netflix series um she's a police detective and i think they switch out the cast for the second season i i didn't watch the second season yet Uh, the first season was great um, but it's kind of its own complete storyline. Maybe it's like The Wire. Like, you just, you know. <laughs> a different set of cast each season. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. And then the captain, of course, we've seen him before. You yep. actually put that together. Yeah, you're the one who told me that he is in Train to Busan. And, yes, uh, and he's in uh, Squid Games. Yes, which I wouldn't, He's he's a small character in Squid Games. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't probably have put that together until later. Or Train to Busan, I can't remember. I don't remember him distinctly in Train to Busan, but he is the main character, <laughs> I think. But I did, when I watched the last episode of Squid Games, which was just recently because I am late to the Squid Game party, I did recognize him as the recruiter guy. So I was like, yep. oh, there he is. And he has a very distinctive look. Yeah, he has very like pronounced cheekbones, like very like his his facial structure is just like very handsome man. Yeah. And who else was in it that we've seen before? Anybody? There's another person actually from Squid Games. Uh, Oh, my gosh. I forgot what character he plays like the bad guy in Squid Games. But in this one, he plays is. Uh, someone who worked for the government that is helping them navigate through the ask, like in getting the water back. So he's more on like the corporate side, but he's the, he's like the, in Squid Games, he's the heavily tattooed guy that owes, you know, people lots of money. And then he's on the bad team of the other folks uh, in Squid Games. So it was interesting to see him in a different, like a softer role this time so I was like oh interesting but I'm like I'm pretty you know he's likely a very popular actor and very versatile in in his approach like like the other actor in in Squid Game the the guy who plays a recruiter you know it's like oh you kind of melt into a different role and it's funny because there's sort of recurring themes in uh Silent Sea that you have seen across other Korean shows, the medical doctor, when she learns that the scientist doctor is going to join the mission, she's like, hey, we all have to be there for, we have to be together for however long, how many weeks this mission is supposed to last. So you could put some makeup on or something. 
<laughs> or it matters how you look, or she says something like that. And so that's a recurring theme that you see in a lot of Korean movies and dramas. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. There was another recurring theme that I was like, oh, there it is again. <laughs> I think it's interesting to be an actor in a culture where everyone tries to maintain this facade of like not being affected, like emotionless facade almost. Mm -hmm. Like in a lot of Korean dramas, you'll see like if someone will clench their fist and that's how they convey that they're really angry right now. But it's and, not expressed in emotion, like a facial expression. Yeah. Yeah. So like a lot of the culture I think is, it's very like conformist and you know don't make don't make a scene don't make waves like you know just if you're upset about something keep keep it under control <laughs> and so I do wonder like is it is it hard to be an actor in that situation in a culture where emotion is not so readily accepted yeah, that's a good point. Maybe it's escapism by having, by seeing, you know, actors and actresses able to convey their emotion, you know, physically or, you know, facial expression physically with uh, their bodies. Possibly, yeah. So let's pull up the slide. You recommended this, but you mm -hmm. only gave it a 22. <laughs> I did. I did. Um, I mean, it's not to say that I don't like it. I just thought, it would be different. I think at the time that I recommended it to you, maybe I was, was I like halfway through it? I still thought it was good. I definitely think that the more, you, you've said in the past that dramas are not your favorite thing, mm -hmm. which I think is funny because you watch so many of them. <laughs> and this was definitely a drama. Like this show was definitely a dramatic series. It was sci-fi, it was wrapped in sci-fi, but it's mm -hmm. a dramatic series. Yeah. And was, uh, yeah. do you think that after you recommended it, maybe you liked it a little bit less because of the, the like drama? what it became because of the Luna component, like where they discover that they're experimenting on the like, people. Yeah, I was disappointed in that, but I'm like, oh, that's an element of horror. I just, there were so many unknowns, especially, you know, with the whole Luna thing and then communicating with the government and the government didn't want them to like essentially figure out that they were experimenting on clones. And then you had the one bad apple with amongst the crew who's trying to kind of make sure that all of the resources got back to essentially this, this force that was sending them out there. So it, I just felt like one, there was a lot of collateral damage Two, that the water that they were acquiring was dangerous. It's like, you don't know what will happen when you go to the U S and, or not to the U S you go back to, you know, earth and it's chemical reactions. We see that like basically people drown and in the on the moon, but then you need Luna to actually control whatever her whatever is in her her blood or her genes helps control essentially the water. Um, so it's kind of like you need to have the water and Luna. You can't just have the water. So by them, you know, at the end, but when they're flagging down or are trying to debate whether to go to the International Space Station to test things. It's like you should should go with Luna, but then they understand that like she needs to kind of live her life on her own. But then there's a bunch of Luna clones, so you never know. <laughs> I thought it was good. If there's a second season, I would totally watch it. I hope it explains a you know a little more that they didn't this time around. But I was totally expecting horror, and I got like drama and. Yeah. What about you? I really liked it. And I don't like things wrapped in sci-fi. Of, of all the genres, I think sci-fi is my least favorite. <gasps> oh my gosh. I know, right? Dax is like, you should watch The Martian. I'm like, isn't he? Mm. 
<laughs> I mean, I feel like I would like that. I like a lot of shows. Mar- the um, Martian's not sci-fi. It's like, it's more drama. It's like him trying to get home. There's no aliens that show up. He said it could be a cowboy movie and you would never, they'd just be wearing different costumes and it's the same story. Very and true. I do like a lot of single actor movies like Locke was very good. Moon was very good. Mm-hmm. Moon is a sci-fi. I mean, it's yeah. Sam Rockwell. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. So yeah, I, I will probably watch it one day, but just when I see a movie, a trailer for sci-fi, I'm always a little bit like, "Mm." (laughs) but it's true. Most sci-fis could be reframed as Westerns and I would love them. I was surprised. I did really like this. I think because I had had the background with the doctor from the series Stranger, I was predisposed to like her because I liked her there. Uh, It was interesting to me that it was, they had so many storylines. So there's the storyline of, her and her sister. And then there's mm-hmm. the storyline of the government um, and trying to get this water, but not knowing, not telling anyone why, or the samples and not telling them that it's water. And then there's the, the captain with his daughter. And mm-hmm. then there's the people who are outside protesting the water rights. And then there's the intrigue with the guys who are on the crew but they're spies Mm -hmm. and then there's the the other apparently other space stations yes yes they're like oh we got to get to the space station to meet the u.s guys because they'll help us get off because the station is broken nobody called them until the last minute (laughs) right i felt like there were so many storylines that were trying to get wrapped up very quickly towards the end Mm -hmm. but i I liked them all and I thought none of them were given more time than they <clears throat> than they needed. So like we don't need to necessarily delve deeply into why those guys were trying to betray the Korean space mission for whatever underground group they were associated with. I didn't need to know who that is. It's fine we can just know that they are sabotaging. And so I like that there were a lot of different storylines. It enhances the primary line. So I really like the story. As a reader's choice, I would give it a three. I would definitely recommend it. That the production and quality set were very high. You know, everything else, acting was good. Cinematography was good. Soundtrack was okay. I didn't really notice the soundtrack. So it's yeah, just average it was, for what it was. Yeah. <laughs> special effects were good when they were out like fixing that thing whatever the broken thing was that he was out fixing oh yeah like the elevator shaft thing yeah that yeah. was good so yeah I, I think the way this scale was sort of initially set up we did it I, quickly because we were like oh we should have a scale okay it doesn't always accurately convey how much you like something because Raider's Choice is only one of 10 categories. Mm-hmm. And so I had to re rejigger it for documentaries because so many of these categories don't apply to documentaries. And maybe yeah. we'll have to rejigger this one too. Okay. Yeah. I'm Let's completely see. open to it. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Um, I just haven't figured out what we would necessarily change to make it more accurate. Maybe we wait. The Raider's Choice, or we give Raider's Choice as a separate. Oh number? yeah, it's like our, yeah, like a multiplier possibly. Hmm. Maybe. So like, yeah. Maybe the rating is at fifty or something like that, and it there's a yeah. We can figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything to plug now at the end of this episode? Nothing to plug. Um, do you have anything to plug? Uh, I'm moving things over to our Patreon portal. Some things are put behind the wall, but other things are not. Most things are public. Keep watching for those things to migrate over. And all new postings are going up on Patreon, being made public, most of them as well. All Thank right. you. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining. Bye.